Welcome to a lesson on interpreting the graph of a function. Here we're asked to consider the graph of the function h of t shown below, where along the horizontal axis we have time in seconds, and along the vertical axis we have the height of the rocket in feet. We're first asked to identify the input variable in the units of the input variable, as well as the output variable in the units of the output variable. When we have the graph of a function, the inputs are always along the horizontal axis, and the outputs are always along the vertical axis, which means the input variable is time, and the units are seconds, and the output variable is height of the rocket, and the units are feet. Now looking at part A, we're asked to interpret the meaning of the statement h of five equals 82. Well, given h of five equals 82, five is the input, and 82 is the output. And therefore, h of five equals 82 means, after five seconds, the rocket is at a height of 82 feet, or is 82 feet above the ground. Looking at this graphically, if we go to five seconds on the horizontal axis, which is here, and then go straight to the function, we'd be at this point here, which shows us, after five seconds, the rocket is at a height of 82 feet, which means the order to pair for this point would be five comma 82. So h of five equals 82 as an ordered pair would be five comma 82. And the meaning of h of five equals 82 means, again, after five seconds, the rocket is at a height of 82 feet. Now for part b, we're asked to determine h of seven, run as an ordered pair, and interpret the meaning. So to determine h of seven, we want to find the output when the input is seven. Let's go to the graph and determine this function value. So we'll go to seven along the horizontal axis where we find an input of seven. Normally we would go straight up to the function, but notice how here the graph of the function intersects the horizontal axis at this point, which means this point is a horizontal intercept where the ordered pair would be seven comma zero. Notice how when the input is seven, the output would be zero, which means h of seven equals zero. So again, as an order to pair, that would be seven comma zero. So this tells us that after seven seconds, the rocket is at a height of zero feet, meaning the rocket is on the ground. So we could say after seven seconds, in this case, the rocket lands. So after seven seconds, let's say the rocket lands. It would also be okay to say the rocket is at a height of zero feet or that the rocket is on the ground. Now for part C, we're asked to determine T when H of T equals 50. So here we're given that the output is equal to 50 and we're asked to find the input T. To answer this question, we'll find 50 on the vertical axis where we find the outputs. Notice how the output of 50 would be here. So anywhere along this horizontal line, the height of the rocket is 50 feet. And notice how there are two places on the graph where the output would be 50. Here, when the input is one or one second, and here, where the input is six or six seconds. So the ordered pair for this point would be one comma 50. The ordered pair for this point would be six comma 50. So we can say that h of t equals 50 when t equals one or when t equals six. So we'd have two ordered pairs. We'd have the ordered pair one comma 50 and six comma 50. Two ways to express the meaning of this would be the rocket is at a height of 50 feet after one second and after six seconds, or we can say after one second and after six seconds, the rocket is at a height of 50 feet. Let's go ahead and say after one second and six seconds, the rocket is at a height of 50 feet. For part D, we're asked to determine the maximum height of the rocket. So looking at the graph as well as the vertical axis, notice how the highest point on the graph is this point here, where the height is 100 feet. So that is the maximum height. Notice how that occurs after three and a half seconds. So the ordered pair for this point here would be 3.5 comma 100. 
but our question is only asking for the maximum height, so we can say the maximum height of the rocket is 100 feet. For part E, we're asked to determine the practical domain of H of T. The practical domain is a set of all possible inputs that make sense for the function H of T. And again, we always find the inputs along the horizontal axis. So by analyzing the horizontal axis, we can see that the practical domain is going to be from zero seconds all the way to seven seconds. And we are going to include the endpoints because they do have meaning here. At time t equals zero, that's right when the rocket takes off. And when time t equals seven seconds, that's right when the rocket lands. So we'll say the practical domain is going to be t is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to seven. The units here are seconds. It's also common to express the domain using interval notation. And because the endpoints here are included, we would say the closed interval from zero to seven. So we have a square bracket zero comma seven square bracket. Again, the units would be seconds. If the endpoints were not included, we would have two less than symbols here and we use a set of parentheses around zero and seven rather than square brackets. And then our last question is, determine the practical range for H of T. The practical range is the set of all possible outputs that make sense for H of T. So now looking at the vertical axis, which tells us the height of the rocket, notice how the practical range would be from zero up to the maximum height of 100. And again, we are going to include the endpoints because a height of zero makes sense. That's when the rocket is on the ground. And the output of 100 makes sense because we already determined that's the maximum height of the rocket. So the practical range would be h of t is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 100, and the units are feet. We're using interval notation. We'd have the closed interval from zero to 100, and of course, again, the units are feet. I hope you found this helpful.